meeting of the Glendale City Council and the successor agency for September 10th, 2013, beginning at 3.24 p.m. May we have a roll call for the City Council. Council Members Friedman. Here. Njarian. Here. Quintero. Here. Tananian. Here. Mayor Weaver. Here. And for the successor agency. Board Members Friedman. Here. Najarian. Here. Quintero. Here. Tananian. Here. Chair Weaver. Here. And we have your report. Agenda for the September 10th, 2013 Joint Public Meeting of the City Council and the successor agency was posted on Thursday, September 5th, 2013 on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Before you, there's only one item on this agenda, Director of Economic Development regarding economic development activity in fiscal year 2012-13 and Economic Development Division Work Plan for fiscal year 2013-14. 1A is a motion to note and file the report. Okay, Mr. Cho. Yes, sir. I don't want to steal any of Mr. Lanza Fame's thunder, but I will say that this has been an extraordinary year, both for the challenges that we faced, as well as the achievements that uh, your vision and our staff's uh, execution have yielded. So with that, Phil, do you want to walk us through? Yes, again, it is my pleasure to present this report to you. Uh, as we move into a more traditional economic development program, uh, we want to be reporting back to you on the efforts, especially as we're in these infant stages. Um, so I uh, want to talk about a uh, little bit about the evolution of economic development uh, in Glendale, uh, our accomplishments from last year, some of the indicators that are, are letting us know we're headed in the right direction, uh, and then finally uh, some uh, highlights of our work plan for the coming year. From the early 70s when we first formed redevelopment to until its dissolution in February 2012, we were for the most part uh, a, an economic development program that was based in redevelopment. We were more about subsidy uh, and we keep jumping. Uh, is this on a time? It's on auto. Uh, we try to move it back as best we can. Or you could speed up your presentation. <laughs> <laughs> or I can speed up my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the but just came back. <laughs> from the 70s <laughs> from the 70s to now um, we've shifted out of redevelopment uh, we are more about facilitation than subsidy um, and Artie help me go back here um, you have authorized a, an economic development uh, effort program in the municipal code uh, you also have asked us to take the initial steps uh, for forming a local economic development um, agency uh, to carry out our program. Yeah, I'll move it. All right, you forward it there. What it would say, um, you had identified three priorities last year through our budgeting process for economic development to really focus on Class A office, uh, to enhance our, our downtown and our city as an 18-hour city, uh, not something that closes down after the business day, and then improve service to our business. With respect to office, and the next slide, please. Uh, this is an important um, graph that we came up with. Why is it important that we have a, a robust office market? As you can see from the slide, the red, is, the red line is sales tax. The blue bars are our occupancy rate. And everything dropped at the same time with the, with the, um, the recession. What we're seeing in the rebound, though, as market comes back, sales tax is outpacing. This is in the adjacent mid-brand area. Sales tax is outpacing that growth. What we're finding is uh, there could be two things for this. There are more people per square foot in an occupied office building today than there was even five years ago, and that's a trend we're seeing. Sounds like the airlines that are packing more passengers in their planes. Fewer office planes. Is, office is definitely working differently, and we're seeing that. Um, and so there's more people spending. The other thing that, that I hope we see out of this is that those same people are spending more um, because they're here longer in an 18-hour downtown. So this was something we'd started to put together. Uh, Mid-brand is immediately adjacent to the office, and we're seeing that um, a higher number of shoppers and sales tax. Next slide. Uh, some of the tactics that we used 
uh, we really researched the industry clusters and, and we got to know, informed ourselves about what prospects might be out there. Probably the most important thing that we did was renew a relationship with the brokerage community um, and start to exchange information with them. So we knew what was coming on, what, what to anticipate, uh, and who might be prospects that we could all go after. We did the same with um, office, uh, the BOMA is the Building and Office Management Association, so we have a better idea of that whole industry. Uh, we pitch stories in media, and then we have developed some marketing brochures that are specific to uh, this uh, recruitment for this, bill, uh, this industry, this cluster. Uh, we're seeing um, certainly some, uh, some benefits. Our office occupancy is outpacing the region. The white is the, is the Tri-City region. The blue is Glendale. You can see we're, we're closing that gap. So we're growing faster than the rest of the, uh, the region. Uh, we have had some high-profile tenants come into Glendale, Whole Foods, Avery Dennison, uh, and this was something, a tactic that uh, one of the things that we're working on is stay with those potential tenants. Um, I think uh, Mr. Njarian was the mayor and Ms. Friedman was the redevelopment agency chair at the time. Three or four years ago, we visited Avery Dennison. We tried to bring them to, the, to uh, Glendale. We never stopped that communication, nor did the broker community. Uh, and today, uh, well, I should say starting January 1st, uh, they will call Glendale their international headquarters. That's a big, big thing for us. Next slide. The media coverage, we've tried. I'm sorry, just a quick question about Avery Dennison. Given that it's corporate headquarters, do they bring sales tax revenue to us? Uh, they don't because most of their, their administrative and they, they happen at point of sale. But they'll spend their money in Glendale. They will. No, I was just curious. I'm glad to know that the basket that the Americana sent over paid it off. <laughs> Eventually it paid off. Um, but uh, a, a side benefit of this is the wonderful press that we've received. And that's not a mistake either. Uh, Sharon Garrett, uh, who, who you know has been working on the staff, um, has really started working hard with Tom Lorenz. So every time we get one of these successes, they go out in um, media releases. Um, with respect to Whole Foods, we got some great coverage regionally. When Avery Dennison uh, decided to come to Glendale, the, the Chicago Tribune picked up the story. So we're hearing about Glendale in various parts of the country uh, through some uh, leveraged activities. Next slide. Um, why is an 18 hour, our next, uh, our next area, why is that important? Uh, what you see in the slide here is sales tax is about 27, 28 percent of our total revenues. Um, we think that there's a, a good portion that's coming from sales tax right now. We think that there's room for growth. There's a lot of room for growth in those 18 hour categories. Next slide. Um, here we pr promoted our, our nightlife. Um, we wanted to focus on those critical retail vacancies. Uh, the Borders Building is one, an obsolete building um, that without a bookstore really had some, some trouble. Um, the Minx was a problem. Uh, it was a very large tendency off the freeway. So we focused on those. We also have worked with the planning department, uh, I should say the community development department planning division to try and get in front of these. We have the whole arts and, and, uh, arts and culture district, art and entertainment district, I'm sorry, where we have streamlined um, how business can locate there from the CUP process uh, through all the entitlement. Um, we again have leveraged our media relations and uses all of our branding and all of our, um, and all of our recruitment tactics. We have filled some critical vacancies. Uh, certainly, um, the, the Galleria and general growth was after Bloomingdale's, um, but from three years back, the staff, the council, um, different members of the council um, acting in the redevelopment capacity have met with this retailer, and finally Bloomingdale's made the decision to do that. Um, we have helped them then uh, streamline their entitlement and their construction process. Um, Marshalls is going to be, they're one of the strongest retailers. They will fill a big vacancy. Their store uh, in, in Montrose is one of our top sales tax generators. And allows us to cover the 
both ends of that, that sales tax spectrum from the high end to the discount shopper. Uh, and it allows us at this point to enter a, a stretch uh, of time where you will see a, uh, the, the opening for Nordstrom's, the opening for Five Star Cinema, and the opening for Bloomingdale's all within a 60-day span. Um, that is absolutely unprecedented, not only in California, but the United States. So isn't there a Marshalls up the mall up the road? It's up on uh, Verdugo. On Verdugo. The There's none in the, ma in the mall that has the Nordstrom's rack? No. Yeah, that's uh, TJ Maxx. And all Said the company, a different store. All of these are opening before the holidays, for holiday sales. We continue to see interest uh, in Glendale from other large-scale uh, retailers that want to be here. We've also uh, gotten some great um, uh, new entertainment, uh, that 18 hour use, uh, FO 9021 FO, um, the famous, uh, has, has really come on strong. Uh, they have been uh, highlighted in several blogs, is one of the best places in Southern California and in California to go for entertainment. Uh, out in San Fernando Road, taking advantage of the creative corridor and, and the, the clientele, the demographic that's there. The Glendale Tap has opened and become a huge favorite. In fact, they're looking to expand. Uh, there's um, restaurants that are coming to the Americana to fill some long-term vacancies there uh, on the corner of Brand in Colorado. And then also um, the old Todai, uh, in the Glendale Galleria is upgrading with a Brazilian steakhouse. We see a lot of continued interest from people like Yard House uh, that want to be here and they're waiting for the absolute right spot uh, for them to go. Uh, we just, uh, in, in, while we were putting this presentation together, El Cholo is, is a, a famous Mexican restaurant. They have, again, expressed interest in Glendale. So we're th seeing a lot of private investment wanting to come based on the things that, that we have done and we've, we've achieved in Glendale here. Unami Burger. Uh, um, just a minute. Oh, no, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I thought you were done. I just wanted to say for those who don't know Din Tai Fung, which is coming to the Americana, this is a super famous Chinese restaurant. Um, they think they have something like six locations in Beijing, but I've been several times to their location in Arcadia. I think it's Arcadia. Mm -hmm. And you wait, you'll wait an hour to get in there on a weekend, hour and a half, and even during the weekday you'll wait. And it's uh, dumplings. But people go from all over the Los Angeles region to go there. I, I'm kind of curious as to how that all came about, and I'm assuming the Americana is trying to bring more Chinese tourism into the Americana, um, which is a great idea, and it's certainly a great draw for them, but I'm very excited to have a really, another high quality Chinese restaurant in Glendale. So even though it's in small lettering on there, if you've never heard of it, this is, a, this is for Glendale. I've had people emailing me from around the area, <laughs> foodie friends saying, oh my God, you're getting a Ding Tai Fung. When is it opening? When can we go? So this is kind of a big deal for us. Next slide, please. Um, we have also seen um, in terms of, of the 18-hour uh, day, we need to, to deliver the, the population for it. We've seen some new housing come online, uh, and they're leasing up very well they're, they're according to their, uh, their targets. They're doing very well there. Still, the creative corridor, space is in high demand, and there just is not enough of it. Um, we've seen some tenants uh, move into the Sealy building, a uh, hidden variable in heaven spot. Uh, there's also other... Uh, studios. We've helped a studio move in, uh, so there continues to be creative corridor demand. Um, what we're seeing uh, is a real growth in those 18-hour categories, and this is sales tax where we're looking at restaurants with alcohol, restaurants with beer and wine, and, and others. They're far outpacing the overall sales tax, which is, is good for us in trying to achieve this uh, this initiative of 18 hour. That means people are staying here longer uh, during the day and, and visiting Glendale establishments. Our third initiative was service to business. Um, we are more than ever competing for investment. Uh, where we think we have the competitive edge is the, the, the service that we deliver. We're seeing that in terms of a reputation in Glendale where people are saying, I would like to do business again in Glendale because I was able to do fill in the blank. Um, and really, uh, we've set the stage with, certainly with the redevelopment effort up to this point, 
Um, but now how we're carrying that forward without redevelopment, we've set the stage for continued growth. There's a real recognition among all of our departments that all of them, from public safety to quality of life, they are all in the economic development business. Uh, in, in terms of our tactics, um, probably concierge and publicizing our concierge service, a single point of contact uh, where a business or developer can go and say, I need this, um, help me in the city process, uh, has been the most valuable thing for us. We continue to support the neighborhood business districts. You saw the formation of downtown Glendale Association, where downtown businesses are uh, assessing themselves to leverage the services that are provided uh, that we can no longer afford to provide. Uh, we have started to publish our economic indicators to stakeholders, not only to the council and to our executive team, but also to the brokers that are out there as a help for them uh, to, to use in their recruitment efforts. Uh, we've prioritized media relations. We have learned and, and we have developed relationships with the different business writers uh, with the business journal so that when something comes up we can pitch a story to them and we know that it will come out and we can start to leverage that exposure. Um, regional economic, local and regional economic development groups, um, we are trying to thoughtfully unwind the redevelopment agency to enhance uh, and get as much bump as we can from that and then we're looking at new income streams. Next slide. Um, this is uh, the group uh, downtown. They are ambassadors and they serve two purposes, really as, as a, a living, breathing directory and in source of information, uh, but also as they're walking around, they're continuing to clean the downtown, pick up paper, uh, cigarette butts or what have you. They're reporting to us things that need our attention uh, as well as taking care of things that they've taken on, steam cleaning, whatnot. Um, we have gotten a lot of recognition. Uh, through uh, different things. Uh, KNX was here for an entire day broadcasting. Uh, Time Warner did a, a uh, economic development program uh, that featured Glendale. Uh, we have developed uh, far more uh, relationships with our local entities, business entities, uh, and these are all starting to pay off. Uh, we're seeing uh, in terms of ease of doing business, you, you know... That good. was the city manager that, that was on the charter a thing, was it? That wasn't the charter I think it was, time, it was a Time Warner. It was some cable program. Because we yeah. got a beef with charter. Don't forget that. I wouldn't want As to. This was before the beef. Yes. Okay, but it's Time Warner, attorney. you're good. Uh, you are well aware of, of the gallery and the Americana's expansion. Um, as Mr. Ochoa said, uh, there are four of us, which I'd like to introduce uh, at the end of our presentation. Um, but economic development is now... It's something that is on everybody's mind, and our staff extends to those in management services, others in management services, um, as well as in community development. Um, so that's really where you're seeing that. One of the, the important ones, the sale of the marketplace, um, this was a, an owner that thought they could buy the property, um, be across from the Americana, and just reap the benefits. They really weren't retailers themselves. Um, they have realized that, sold the property, to a retail owner that can now reposition that. There was a lot of help by your staff in making that happen, which will now allow a repositioning and I hope a rebirth of the, Ameri of the marketplace um, and bring it more in line uh, with what's happening around. Next slide, please. This is a quick economic indicator, um, Class A uh, year over year. Class A is up, sales tax is up. Our medium home sales are up, um, residential rents are up, everything is up on this category um, with the exception of violent crimes down and um, we were talking earlier about a police force that has one officer per thousand. Uh, with, a, with a healthy, robust economy, um, we can augment that just with eyes uh, on the street. I, I know we would all like more officers on the street, but until we do, having a healthy economy and a healthy downtown, an 18-hour downtown, will also help with that um, in terms of violent crime. Next slide. Um, last, uh, a quick summary on, on our work approach. Those three initiatives that you had directed us uh, and you had approved um, were also repeated in our last budget. Um, we'll be working on those. We'll, we'll break them into five initiatives, business attraction, marketing, 
business assistance, asset management, and workforce development. We'll be working closer with the Verdugo Job Center and the Workforce Investment Board uh, to leverage our resources and, and achieve economic development success. We'll also be moving forward with uh, the investigation of a local area economic development association or agency. So next. Uh, and then here's a lot of the same things, but here's some of the areas that we'll stress. Um, we'll, we'll reach out to the high growth industries, um, those like Avery Denison, Whole Foods that are ripe for a move, an expansion, or a reposition. Um, 18 Hour City, we want to get out more into social media uh, to try and promote that as well as attract future operators. Um, and then service to business, um, we will continue that, that priority of dealing with our brokers and staying close to them and property owners so that we know situations before they become a problem and we can start to match different uh, businesses with opportunities. Um, with that, I want to uh, certainly uh, introduce our staff. Sharon Garrett um, uh, is a Principal uh, Economic Development Officer. She's joined by a, a new uh, member of our staff, Darlene Sanchez, uh, and then Jackie Bartlow uh, is uh, an Economic Development Coordinator. Um, these three uh, are the, the core team. Uh, Sharon has done quite a bit of work um, in, in putting this presentation together, but in seeing um, some of those attraction efforts. Jackie has been very instrumental in uh, the, uh, maintaining business and the business services that we have, and then those two uh, to the, uh, the liaison to our neighborhood business districts. Darlene just started with us two weeks ago, but we've already got her working on some of the concepts for developing new revenue sources. Uh, so we're looking forward to that, and uh, we'll be back to report from you uh, to you on a periodic basis. That completes my report. Does staff, I mean, does council want to comment at all on this? No, Mr. I have a question, Chair. though. In terms of your um, outreach and marketing to companies and commercial brokers, are you maintaining a record of those uh, uh, contacts? Uh, we do. And, in fact, Sharon's been working on that um, because we're a small staff. And so if somebody is gone for something, we'll be able to need to pick that up. Um, we've started to look at different ways to have a war room, if you will, where we can have on a whiteboard uh, our different opportunities that we're working on. Um, we then cycle back through brokers and those different tenants. Well, I would take the approach of never mind the uh, whiteboard. I'd put it into your iPad, and I find what's most helpful in contacts is that you do it once, maybe have a great conversation with the person, and then there's a call back a month later, six weeks, just a constant. It has to be done literally on a yearly basis. Getting Avery Dennison here took years, as you mentioned, and that's true of the commercial brokers. They're out there trying to make a living, unless the staff is interacting with them literally on a monthly basis. There's a chance we might lose something to Burbank or Pasadena. So. It, it is very much like sales, uh, Mr. Quintero, where you do need to keep that ongoing communication. Um, and as we say, Avery Dennison is, uh, is an example. To some extent, Bloomingdale's is as well. We continued to work with general growth and reach out to Bloomingdale's at every opportunity that we could. So I also quite well taken. I'd even go a step further. And once you have the uh, electronic information contacts on the company and everything else, mail, uh, I mean, I would just set, send something to them every maybe two months. Just send them things. The more information they get on their computer about us and the more things that are sent in the mail to them, the better the marketing effort is. It doesn't cost that much to do it, but over a period of months and years, that will result in and putting that, uh, the idea of downtown Glendale, the uh, creative corridor, and everywhere else. That'll put Glendale on the map in terms of their thinking. However, the general public's got to understand a lot of these negotiations are done in private. We knew about Avery months ago. We were told, no speak. Avery will decide when they want to announce. So a lot of negotiations are going on. We may know about them, but we can't talk about them. Mr. Najayan. Um, Phil, we used to have a presence at the ISCA 
national convention, and we have not done so in the past few years. Do you see any uh, repercussion from that? Do you see any less uh, amount of interest from the major players and retailers that uh, that attend that? Um, I, I don't think so. Um, there's there is becoming a lot more because everybody was was pulling back. There's a lot more local. Um, our our vacancy rate is very low, occupancy very high in the retail area, uh, and we're able to figure out who is growing just by doing our own research, uh, who's growing, who we should approach. So we really haven't seen a drop off. It will be important, though, for us to touch base every now and again, stay involved with that organization, um, and keep those contacts. Uh, there may come a time where we want to send um, a, a staff person to uh, be aware, or if there's a particular tenant that we're after, it may be a, a trip where we ask one of you to go along with us. Um, because really, the, the representation of the city comes from, from the five of you, and that always makes a big impact. So we're able to do it locally, uh, and if we need to, we could we could go out there very quickly. I mean, I can I can relate that uh, four years ago, I think, which was maybe the last time we went there, three years ago, several council members attended and had some strong words with the general growth properties management, and we said, you guys better shape up and change your tune with the Americana because they were still just fresh off that battle and create a synergy there and create a property that is no less attractive than the Americana. They, you know, they hemmed and hawed. They were noncommittal, but, you know, you can see, see where it has turned out today. I'd like to think that that direct mm -hmm. contact by the council members played a role in that. I, I know that it did, and, and because those meetings, those things happen, and then things happen, the, there's the continued communication that happens once everybody gets back home. Uh, and so, again, that's to Mr. Quintero's point, we all need to continue on those. Other comments? I'll say a couple of things. Uh, you know, my 17 plus years on the council, I know I've sat here for at least 10 to 12 years and nothing was happening. Uh, we had all this empty open space. Uh, we have parking lots down where the Americana is now. And we're wondering, my gosh, when when are we going to get the investments in this community? Because we know it's a good place to be. And then came along the Americana, which only was approved by 2% of the voters, 51 to 49. Uh, if that ha hadn't happened, we'd probably still have parking lots down where it is now. But I've been told many times that the Americana and its ability to generate revenue and, and, and rent out or lease out apartments and condos for sale. Uh, those were all of what stimulated Wall Street to start making investments in this area. Um, other things, I think we're coming out of the end of the recession. Uh, there's a pent up demand to spend and things like that. Um, housing development. Uh, Developers out there, uh, retail, commercial, whatever, they see all this housing stock going in right downtown. They know our intentions to turn it into a fun place to be 18 hours a day. So they're looking much more seriously to coming in here. And again, the staff. You know, it plays no small role. We can sit up here and give direction, but to me, the staff taking advantage of all these other factors are really making a difference. It's, I'm totally amazed at the progress that we're making uh, within just the last 12 months. You look all over. The only complaints I'm getting is they don't like the construction activity downtown. But of course, this whole city was built without causing any disruption on traffic or noise or dust in the air, right? Nothing happened. Uh, it's just part of it. You've got to tolerate it to, to make it the way we want. We're making all the investments um, that make those developments look good. Improved streets, sidewalks, um, 
trees, landscaping, arts, everything is contributing, coming together to focus. And I can't see it stopping for so many years. We're in a window of opportunity, and it will dry up eventually. But hopefully we'll be set, and other county entities will be trying to uh, keep up with us. You know, I'm getting up there in years, but I know we can't live in the past. People that are, were born and lived here they tell me, why can't it be like it was in the 1940s, 1950s? It can't be. It's got to change. It's got to be for what the 20, 30, 40 year olds want and demand. Uh, so everything happening is for the good of the future and for the best of it. Uh, I know we're going to outshine uh, our neighbors pretty soon in entertainment values. I've been briefed on what Burbank is doing, and I happen to think that we're doing more, and we're going to keep it up. Pasadena has the Rose Bowl, and we'll never have a Rose Bowl in Glendale. That's, that's for certain. But it's, it's, it's great we're seeing. I think it's a great report, and I'm superbly happy with the last of fame and his staff for what they're doing. Sharon, you're magnificent what you do, including the ceramics that you make that you can buy at, uh, at Arts and Crafts Festival in June. She has a booth up there with her daughter. So stop by and pay her respects. So with that, uh, anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion to note and file. Second. At uh, roll call. Council members Friedman? Yes. Dorian? Yes. Quintero? Yes. Sananian? Yes. Mayor Weaver? Aye. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn for the City Council? So moved. So moved. And for the successor agency? So moved. Second. Thank you. We are adjourned for both. Okay. Now the last one the special meeting of the Glendale City Council uh, for September 10th, 2013, commencing at uh, 3.55 p.m. We, we have a roll call for the City Council. Council Members Friedman? Jarian? Here. Quintero? Here. Tananian? Here. Mayor Weaver? Here. And we have a report. The agenda for the September 10th, 2013 special meeting of the Glendale City Council is posted on Friday, September 6th, 2013 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. Thank you. Two Thanks. items before you. The first one is Director of Library, Arts and Culture and Director of Community Services and Parks regarding art donation. 1A is a motion accepting the art donation of the life-size plywood cutout of Clint Eastwood titled Cowboy on the Hill by artist Justin. Which one's up on the hill now? On the west side. Oh, you're going to tell us? It's still up there. There's something. Uh, Gene Autry is up there right now. That's Gene Autry? Yes. Oh, I thought it was Clint still. Thank you, um, Mayor Weaver and members of the council. Uh, for your consideration today is um, whether to accept the um, Cowboy on the Hill, um, which is Clint Eastwood, um, to be located on one of the um, hillsides of Glendale. As uh, most people remember, in 2012, um, several of these uh, cutouts depicting famous cowboys appeared on the hills of Glendale. They're visible um, by commuters on the two freeway as well as um, hikers on our trails. Uh, unfortunately, in the past year, um, Clint Eastwood uh, was vandalized and ultimately disappeared. Um, at that time, the artist Justin approached the city um, and expressed his interest to recreate uh, the cutout and donate it to the city. So we have been working um, with um, staff from Community Services and Parks, Mark Sturdivant, who actually oversees uh, the trails. And we've looked at a, a location uh, that is still visible from the freeway, um, but it is um, you know, off the beaten path, so we hope that uh, the piece will be protected in this location. Um, the Arts and Culture Commission, as well as the Community Services and Parks Commission, have both reviewed this, and they recommend accepting the donation. 
Um, in addition, um, uh, during this process, Justin um, expressed his interest to donate the entire Cowboy on the Hill series to the City Council. Uh, the other cowboys include Gene Autry, which is already up there, uh, John Wayne, Annie Oakley, and Roy Rogers um, with his horse. Question. Yes. How tall is Clint Eastwood? As an example. I will ask um, Justin to come up and answer that question. Because the distance away, I'm wondering what you're going to see at that distance. Um, see, I couldn't tell was Clint Eastwood or Gene Autry. Do you know who Champion is? No. Thank you. It's the horse of, of, uh, of uh, Gene Autry. Um, but I'm just wondering, all of these are stationed on the two different locations and when you're driving at 80 miles an hour going up there you have a split second and you've got to focus in that time are they close enough that they're going to be seen are you going to build them bigger before you donate them I hate to interrupt your presentation but I want to get that point yeah um, Clint, Clint Eastwood is uh, six feet tall he's just a normal size um, He's actually on the trail, so if you're hiking up there, you can go up there and uh, ring the bell. Um, That's currently not in the one you're going to put it at. This is Clint right. The, the other place is a little off the beaten path, but you could hike up there. Um, we took several people up there to um, to get a view of it, uh, where he is. All of them are visible from the freeway. They are. Um, like Gene Autry, you, you may not, you wouldn't know that was Gene Autry. You just see this cowboy on the hill. Um, that's kind of part of the, I guess, uh, fun of it um, is that people people know through magazines and news sources that um, this cowboy is up there, and then that other cowboy is up there. Um, the difference is, if I'm going north on the, going south on the two, I see silhouette. Right. Up there, now going north, he's going to be into the hillsides, so I'm not going to get the silhouette image. I'm going to have to find him. Um, not necessarily. There's so there's different hills. Um, our new site for this uh, um, for Clint Eastwood, it's there. It's on a it's silhouetted. That was a one of the main further considerations. Huh? One further up, uh, closer to uh, uh, the 210 freeway. Right, the original spot for it was perfectly silhouetted, um, and that was that's okay. where I. You okay. know. Just wanted to ask, you're donating it. What the heck? Sure. Okay. Object. But why don't you put the horse with uh, Gene Autry? Yeah, you know, um, I'm putting up the horse of uh, Roy Rogers and his I grew up horse with all Trigger. these guys. You know. <laughs> Roy Rogers and Trigger, I think, is a little. Uh, people know Trigger and Roy Rogers, and he's going up with his horse. And of course, everybody knows John Wayne. Is from Glendale, California. Then he worked at the Alex Theater. One of my neighbors is a collector of his paraphernalia. John Wayne was up on the hill between the 134 and the 2, and he overlooked Glendale High School. I put him up so you could see That's him. That's where he went. So you could see him from Glendale High School. Justin, are you a Glendale resident? No. Not uh, yet, right? No, I, I live in Glassell Park. Why did you choose Glendale for your installation? Um, uh, my fiance works at Hoover High School, ah, um, okay. so <laughs> I go up and down in the area a lot. And John Wayne, you know, went on to USC. We won't talk about that tonight. <laughs> Not at all, right, Mark? But great. They're going to be nice. I hope we vote for it. Ms. Friedman. She, you, I don't think she's done. I, I'm done. I was just saying I'm oh, done. So I'm if you sorry. have any questions for me or Mark, um, if you have a parks-related question, we're happy to answer your questions. Well, I just want to I, I want to say a few things. First, I am really thrilled about this donation, and even more thrilled to hear that it's not just going to be the one, but it's going to be the whole series. And this is the kind of organic art that. I really respond to. It's not something we put an RFP out for. It's not something we were looking for. We didn't go out and interview a bunch of people. It was an artist who took it upon himself um, to have a vision that included Glendale and went out and did it and, and this is where we are today. And for those who haven't followed the stories in the news, 
um, the John Wayne, um, uh, sorry, the Clint Eastwood cutout has an extra special message, which is about organ donation, having to do with a meeting that Justin had with um, a gentleman um, named um, Reg Green, whose son Nicholas was murdered and his organs were donated. And so the bell was put on the, the figurine so that people could ring the bell to think about organ donation. And I hope that there's a little plaque that explains that, and I see that there will be. So um, I hope it's not vandalized again, because besides being a great piece of art, it has a really beautiful and, and very touching message as well to deliver. And I love not only that it's seen from the highway, but also for people that are up and hiking and enjoying the hills. It's not a huge spectacular thing that's lit up and flashing and all of that, but it's something that will give people a really um, intimate experience in a very unexpected place, which to me is really one of the hallmarks of, of effective public art. Um, it's going to make the experience of hiking really special for people. I've gone hiking a, f a few times. And I've never had an artistic encounter on a hiking trail like that. So I, I think it's really wonderful and innovative and very special. And I'm really glad to have it. And if there's any other artists out there listening and you have a vision that involves the city, I hope that you'll take this to mean that we're open to that, to those experiences and encouraging them and, and um, you know, adopting pieces like this. So um, I hope that other artists see that we're we are a city that's open to art and, and want more of it. So thank you, Justin, so much for the donation. Can't wait to see Darth Vader up there. <laughs> so uh, do we have permission from like 20th Century Fox or from Clint Eastwood to use those? And shouldn't we have to get them? I mean, it looks like it's essentially a, a, an actual picture as opposed to an artistic rendition which would remove it, I think, a little bit from the copyright and trademark. Well, let's go for it. Uh, we have not, but we can look into it and see if it is necessary to get those, um, um, the trademarks, if any, are necessary. I, I know with, with, with when it comes to public art, um, it is a, a freedom of speech and it is protected and you can use a lot of different images and text, um, so we can look into that and see if it is going to be an issue. Other we don't have to contact them to find out. No, just put it up and let them come after us. Well, my question is, what are we going to do when other people want to post different uh, we'll vote on things it. on our hillsides? What's the uh, story there, Mr. City Attorney? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I think that was part of the reason why we brought this forward, where it was brought forward, was so that it would get approval of, of both the commissions and the council. And, and if there are future instances where someone want to donate art, then they'll have to go through staff to get the approval. Um, and if they need to come to council, then they will. Okay. Yeah, no, that's a question because there may be other people wanting to put uh, things up on the hillsides that we may not be too happy with and this sets a precedent. The current sign on the Eagle Rock side by the uh, right. two transition I mean, our, I LA mean, is trying to get down. Our hill specifically. Liberty. Liberty, yeah. So are there permits required for this? I mean, <coughs> this is kind of like a, you're talking about freedom of speech, just in a sense as a billboard. Uh, I just I don't want to look I don't want to you guys right. deal with that we'll look into it outside but yeah it's not a billboard I don't want to the idea of having the council accept it addresses the placement making sure that people just can't go willy-nilly and place things right. where we wouldn't want them to be so this actually allows us to do it in a in an orderly way to control it I hope there's not any vandalism that we have to put up and put chain link fence around or to protect them <laughs> there's blooming idiots all over the place and, and only one of them will be seen by the two, from the two, oh, no. or others? They all will. Or all will. <laughs> Actually, um, all of them um, are meant to be seen from the two freeway as well as the hiking trails. Um, actually, um, Artie, if you can put up the PowerPoint uh, again, you, I can show you show some of all. the other uh, proposed locations. Um, Justin has been working with Mark to look at, uh, uh, identify some of the hillsides along the two freeway um, that, are, um, that would be visible. So. Okay, once again, following Mr. Najarian's line of thinking, how about the federal government? Is there, aren't there issues on freeways and what can be seen and so forth? I mean, They're far off. They're not within the Caltrans right away. 
Yeah, if it's subject as to as long uh, as it's off Caltrans right away. Then it's those, that's the subject of the Federal Beautification Act. I like the way you think, though, Mr. Quinn. Yeah, I'm just anticipating litigation down there. My God, if they want to litigate things like this, there's. And that's why, if it's donation, if we ever run into issues, then it's our at that point becomes our our property. Uh, okay, there, there's where the other locations are. A couple of them. I think I'll clear up to one by the. Uh, Verdugo off ramp, close up by Verdugo's hospital, right? I think that's John Wayne. Now, he's six foot four, so he'll be a little more visible. <laughs> so they're all normal size, regular five, six. Well, one more thing. I'd like to encourage the, uh, although these were not, quote, Indian fighters in most of their movies, I would like to encourage the artist to come up with a Native American. There certainly were. Native Americans that were famous in the uh, I could put up the old cowboy the Lone movies. Ranger and Tonto. Yeah, whatever. I think uh, that's important. <laughs> Natives Native Native American. Native Americans lived in this area for thousands of years, especially up in the Verdugo. So, and I, and I don't, and I, I don't mean the uh, Johnny Depp version of Tonto either. <laughs> I grew up with the other one. If Are the Tongvas okay with all this stuff? <laughs> There's no because American I know we had dedicated the hills. I'm serious. I mean, we had dedicated. I don't think this hill, but uh, Tongva Peak, which is the highest peak just in the. Bit over uh, there. So I hope they're okay, like, and they don't. Is in the Verdugos. Oh my goodness! Part of it. Can I actually speak to that real quick? Um, I am working on two separate projects with two different Native American women. Uh, one is Tongva, and the other is uh, Navajo. Very good. Thank you. That's why I'll well, like I say, if you follow their movies, they were more into bar fights and uh, <laughs> and bank robbers than uh, than Sorry, we'll killing around, Native. We'll America. get around to Father Sarah pretty soon. He's one of the first. I'll move one uh, A. And, and if I would add, the, the actually the staff recommendation appears to be accept all of the all of the, the four uh, cutouts or the four pieces. So, of Clint Eastwood, right. et cetera, et cetera. Right. The, the current motion that was part of the report was only the Clint Eastwood, so I think the recommendation is to accept all of them. With that amendment, right. accepting all pieces. From is there a second? Second. Okay. Roll call. Council members Friedman? Yes. Ajarian? Yes. Taro? Yes. Kananian? Yes. Mayor Weaver? Hi. What's your timeline? Are they done yet? Are you going to put any out? For which one? First one. Sorry, I got that. Well, it all just depended on how long this would take. Um, uh, it usually takes about a month for me to fabricate one, and then uh, <laughs> and then I'd install it. Okay, and then you throw in the two to three months for the legal analysis. So we ought to have them up by Christmas. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Too many attorneys around. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, what's the next item? Next item two is Director of Library Arts and Culture regarding Arts and Culture Commission Work Plan 2A's motion approving Arts and Culture Commission Work Plan for fiscal year 2013-14 and 2014-15. 2B is resolution appropriating $360,000 from the Urban Art Fund. Thank you, Mr. Choa. Yes, sir. Uh, in a short amount of time, your uh, Arts and Culture Commission has put together a uh, rather comprehensive and thoughtful uh, work program and set of uh, priorities and uh, strategic plan, and they are looking to animate that with funding at this point in time that exists in the Urban <coughs> Art Fund. Um, and so with that, we would have uh, Annette come back to the podium and outline what that plan entails. Uh, thank you. I'm really happy to be here uh, to give you an overview of the Arts and Culture Commission's two-year work plan. Um, this was all set in motion uh, about three years ago uh, with the council <coughs> adopting uh, the Urban Art Program and Fund. Since then, the uh, commission developed the Arts and Cultural Plan, which serves as a five-year strategic plan for the arts, and that was approved by the council in February. Now, using the strategic plan as a foundation, the commission has prepared a robust and really well-rounded work plan that will serve for the next two years. And the work plan um, identifies the commission's priorities um, based off of that strategic plan. 
Um, one of the first being uh, they really want to review the existing zoning and building codes as it relates to arts organizations and creative uses just to get an idea of what we offer and if anything else can be done. Um, another is they want to build off of the current percent for art uh, for private development and see if there are opportunities for a similar program for capital improvement projects. Um, and another is uh, to develop a streamlined grant um, program for issuing urban art funds uh, through the cultural data project. Uh, that's a program that um, every other city that has a percent for art program uh, uses and it really helps us um, um, stay on top of the grants we're issuing but we also get a lot of good economic data from that. Now, uh, the work plan is funded uh, through the general fund um, and mostly through the urban art fund. Uh, the uh, commission has partnered with the community services and parks department to offer uh, temporary display opportunities in the CSP facilities. This would be for local artists um, who really want to um, display their artwork and that is going to be funded through the general fund. Now the work plan is where we have a lot of that robust uh, programming. Um, one of the first ones is a really popular uh, mural, um, murals on, city, uh, on utility boxes and cabinets, which is common in many cities nationwide. Uh, what we want to do is we want to take that and just change it a little bit by partnering artists with um, the Great American Cleanup. So this essentially would bring together community members, youth, along with the artists, so we can come up with neighborhood-specific themes. So it creates that uh, sense of ownership. And um, because, you know, artists love to paint any type of a canvas, our commission really wants to um, create some statement murals on city property. This can include the city gateways, um, bridge underpasses, buildings, and even parking garages. Probably one of the most um, popular pieces in L.A. right now um, is actually the last one at the West Hollywood Public Library. Um, they actually got three of the... Um, biggest um, street artists to do uh, three murals. Um, the one that's shown there is by Shepard Ferry, and this is the caliber of murals that the commission would like to bring to our city. You know what they paid for that one? Um, you know, that was um, partially funded through MOCA's grant process, but um, I, I don't know, but I know it was a variety of grants that ha helped pay for that. And um, most studies that you read will um, will state that arts as an e um, act as an economic driver for communities. That's because they offer a cultural draw for visitors to come into a community. And usually, at the center of that is a, a really big art event. The commission wants to uh, bring on board an event management consultant to help develop a signature art event for our community, but to also make it into an annual event. We're definitely looking at partnering with the DGA or Glendale Arts to ensure a really successful um, event. On a smaller scale, but equally important, um, is a, a, a series of free public performances during the opening year of Brand Library and Art Center. Uh, we're really looking at, um, you know, creating a, a great uh, public uh, performances. So this could be anywhere from world music to jazz to rock to indie to classical. And we're looking at Sunday afternoon and Friday evening performances. This is something that could attract families that live in the nearby area, but also visitors who are coming to, to see a specific artist or group. Um, in an effort to create new venues for artwork, the commission is looking at offering site-specific installations that are temporary in nature in public spaces. So this would be exclusively on the outside, so it could be anywhere from a median on Brand Boulevard to our plaza here at City Hall to Adams Square to North Glendale. And again, these would be uh, temporary site-specific. And um, this is obviously going to be different than GATE, which was an art and vacant storefronts program. Um, if you recall, the council asked the commission to consider extending the program for an additional year. As part of this work plan, the commission is recommending that uh, we continue the program and extend the contract with Praxis. The next step would be to refine the scope of work, and um, we can um, hope to start implementing or restart the program late in the fall. 
Um, and the last one um, is a, for a feasibility study. It's the very, very preliminary first step of a potential program or a project. Essentially, the uh, commission wants to conduct a feasibility study to see if we, if our community, um, if there's a demand for a multi-use exhibition facility or community gallery. This, uh, um, the study would give us uh, possible locations, the required upgrades, capital improvements, and operational partners. Most importantly, it will tell us if there is demand for a facility locally and on a regional level, what the ongoing operating costs are, what the rental rates could be, and if what we bring in for income will actually cover the expenses uh, that a space would incur. And we are hoping to issue an RFQ for a consultant again this uh, fall. As, as mentioned, this is a really well-rounded work plan. It includes every type of a public art program. So there's something for, um, for every type of artist, art lover, and it's going to provide a lot of cultural assets for our community. And um, the work plan budget for the two years for the Urban Art Fund is 360000 and that's what uh, we are requesting that you appropriate. And um, I'm sure there's going to be a question about this. We currently have just under $2 million in the Urban Art Fund. And as part of our strategic plan, we made a commitment that we would ensure that we would budget so that we could have programming for a 10-year period. So whatever we have right now, we really want to budget to make that money go a long way. And this budget um, um, stays true to that. And another question I'm sure a lot of um, you are wondering is how quickly can we get started on this? Because everyone is excited about the implementation. Well, GATE was something that was ongoing, so as soon as we refine that scope of work, we can start implementing um, or restart the program in fall. We're also going to spend the next couple of months uh, defining the scope of work for each of these projects. You know, right now, it's a very big picture. We really need to identify how many uh, utility boxes or cabinets are repainting, and then we'll issue the call for artists and any necessary RFPs. And we hope to begin implementation starting spring 2013, and it will continue through 2015. And that is um, it. And on behalf of the Arts and Culture Commission, I want to thank you. And I just want to say that they've worked really hard over the last year to, to give you this um, work plan. Thank you. I do have three cards. I want to hear from the public first. Mm -hmm. Thank you. First speaker is Joy Fuhr, followed by uh, Terry Beaver, three minutes each. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Joy Foyer. I'm a longtime Glendale resident, over 40 years. I'm not going to say how many over 40, but you get the point. Um, and I'm very excited about what I see happening um, with the commitment to arts uh, here today. Um, I'm also an independent artist, and I run a nonprofit called Art from the Ashes, which many of you are familiar with, with the program we've done in Glendale, um, about three different events. Um, so it goes without say I have a direct and passionate um, interest in the development of the arts programming um, and that it's the highest quality and, and really uh, engages the community that lives here and also brings in the community from surrounding areas. Um, along with several other artists and arts organizations, we've been attending the Arts and Culture Commission meetings uh, this year to sort of watch the plan take shape and formulate. and. Uh, we're really excited about so much of what you saw up here today. They've really, um, I have to commend them on a, on a lot of effort and time and energy. It's, it's quite a, a, a thing to pull together, and there's a lot of interest to take to heart. So they've done a, they've done a phenomenal job on um, putting that, and I look forward to interacting and participating um, in any way that uh, is possible. Um, there is, however, one area of programming that I would like to draw attention to, and um, it's with regards to recommendations uh, in one area. There's a recommendation to contract directly with a specific vendor for the GATE program, a $60,000 investment of the plan's budget without issuing an RFP. Given the collective goal of the work plan and desire to implement the highest quality of programming, I would hope that the council and commission would consider issuing an RFP to ensure that the best possible candidate um, is awarded the contract. Okay. 
Thank you. Next speak is Terry Deaver, followed by Emily Dahl. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of the Council. My name is Terry Deaver. I am the current chair of the Arts and Culture Commission. And on behalf of the Commission, I really want to thank you for your consideration of the plan and the recommendations before you and encourage your approval of them. The work plan is really designed to sustainably raise the profile of Glendale as an art supportive and dynamic city that's on par with many of our vibrant neighbors. And the implementation of the plan and the urban art appropriation will really bring public art to all corners of our city. It will help to leverage additional resources to the city of Glendale. It will offer new growth opportunities for our artists and for our arts organizations and our creative businesses. And we truly believe that it will continue to engage our residents and our visitors alike. So the process has clearly, it's invited a passionate community uh, dialogue and ideas, and it has already even put the city on the map regionally with curators and artists and art leaders um, throughout the, the Los Angeles basin. So we really encourage your support and, and hope that you'll vote to help to move Glendale forward, really, as a community that is recognized for its creative talent and its innovation and its public art. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Emily Hoff? Uh, my name is Emily Goff, and I'm a teacher, an art teacher at Daly High School. I also run the Daily Mural Project. I'm also an artist. Um, with my colleague, Roger Dolan, we created the mural for the Maple Park Community Center. So um, uh, I'm involved with um, the community and public art. Um, I also live in the area in La Crescenta. My children have gone through Glendale schools and are attending GCC. So. Um, uh, my heart is in this in many ways. Um, I work with at-risk youth in Glendale, and I just want to um, um, state my support for this urban art plan uh, and how important it is to our youth. Um, I've seen the power of community-based public art and how it gives our young people a sense of civic engagement, a sense of pride and a purpose. Um, I've worked with students who did not go to school, and because of the mural program, they stay after school to work, to create art that they know will go out into the community. And um, so I'd just like to uh, say how important it is to many people, including um, our youth. And um, also, in light of the LA mural ordinance that just passed, uh, I think we have to step up to the plate, too. So <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I have no more cards. Any of my colleagues to like to weigh in? Sure. Ms. Friedman. First, I want to thank the commission for the amazing amount of work that they put in to bring this plan forward. It's a very comprehensive policy document. It um, deals with many different projects, um, different policy aspects, and I know that it took them quite a while to put all this together. I'm really thrilled to see this come forward. This is something that I've been asking for since I've been on the City Council, um, to see the Arts and Culture Commission move into a direction of making policy, and um, policy that brings arts into, as Ms. Deaver said, all aspects of the city, um, is something that I think is a long time coming and a very positive step for the Commission. Um, I have some questions, um, suggestions, concerns about a few of the areas. I'm just going to go through them kind of in the order that they came up. Um, we had a, uh, this is about the general fund projects and programs. We as a the council had a, um, an email letter sent to us from the Associates of the Brand Library, which is a nonprofit, asking whether groups that are tied in with Glendale programs like the associates could apply for those general fund um, projects. And I just, I don't see any reason they couldn't since they are a standalone nonprofit, but I just wanted assurance that they could indeed apply. For those of you who don't know, the associates is a group whose sole mission is to bring arts into Glendale um, through the brand library. Um, but they also bring Glendale residents outside of Glendale to see art around the Los Angeles region. Uh, but they, in particular, were concerned that they would somehow be, you know, sort of X'd out of the process. So if you could speak to that. They are, they are not precluded from applying for the temporary art display program and community services and parks. Okay. Thank yeah. you. 
Um, my other, que my next question is about the cultural and performing arts grants, and maybe it's just the way that it was written in the paragraph in the staff report. It seems to imply that all of the events under this area would have to be at one of our libraries. Is that correct? No. Okay, I see head shaking from Ms. Cleary. Well, the the intent for uh, that specific program is that. All those performances would take place in the opening year of Brand Library and Arts Center, so they would all take place oh, so up, up at Brand Library in the plaza area. So all of our performing arts grants would only be going to the Brand Library? That is, that's the program. As so there's, is there any other grant program for any performing arts around the city? No. Okay, so that's something that I have a concern about. We've got some long-standing Glendale events. There's the free chamber concerts at noon that's done once a month. The Glendale Philharmonic is kind of out there struggling. We have people that have really put themselves on the line, put their own finances up, raised money over the years, and scraped along, and I hate to see them left out of this. I mean, I understand that we're celebrating the Brand Library, and I agree that a, a certain portion of this funding needs to go there, but I think we should also consider some of these, these programs that are existing that might not exist any longer. Um, if we don't help them out, and you know, these are groups that have really proven themselves, um, and think that them and other groups should should be looked at. I know it's not a huge amount of money here, but maybe and maybe it's something that they can apply for under the general fund money. I'm not sure, but I just I I, I don't know. I wouldn't know how to react if if let's say I think her name is Jacqueline Suzuki who does the the noon concerts once a month. It's a free concert done here in Glendale. Comes to me and says. But my performance of performers have been performing for free, and we've done this free event for Glendale, and now you're telling us that you're going to give money to outside groups that haven't been here, and we're just totally left out in the cold. I don't know how to reply to that. Only that, that in this particular program, the idea was uh, to commemorate and reintroduce to Glendale uh, the, the brand library. It's very unique. We have this one opportunity to make that first impression, and so that's what the focus on this one is. Now, to your question about whether or not uh, other uh, categories could be open to uh, those folks for to be proponents. I would defer to Cindy, but the idea was really trying to put that best foot forward mm -hmm. on brand. But it's ultimately the council's discretion. Yeah, and I, I was just going to add to that, which is why I was shaking my head in the opposite way. Um, there's nothing to preclude a group from applying for a grant to perform at the brand library for this year. It's just we're talking about location who actually gets chosen to perform there, the, the sky may be okay. the limit. Well, I would, like to, I would like us to have those performances at the Brand Library, but I also feel that we need to allow for funding for performances in other parts of the city. I mean, there are a lot of people who attend these performances who aren't going to get on a bus and go up to the Brand Library. We have performances in central Glendale. The, the concerts at noon, I believe, is in central Glendale. And, Maybe we can find some funding somewhere else, a little bit of funding. It doesn't have to be a lot. I mean, they've been doing this on their own for a while. Uh, and maybe they don't need the funding. Maybe they're not going to ask. But I do think we need to keep an open mind to performances happening in other parts of the city. As much as rolling this out at Brand is great, I don't want to take any resources away from them. You know, not everybody has the wherewithal, the resources to get there. Right. And so, we'll certainly take that back to the commission and hope and assume that they will make a recommendation for additional funding. Okay. Thanks. Now, in terms of the feasibility study for the public gallery, uh, I have two questions. First of all, what's the difference between that and the gallery that's already at the Brand Library? We have a public gallery there. So that's number one. And number two, to spend $40,000 on a feasibility study to me makes me just wonder, why not just spend $40,000 and open a gallery for a year? I mean, the city owns space. We own space on Maryland. I don't know if it's occupied. I mean, I'm not suggesting we kick anyone out. But if we have vacant space somewhere, why not just open a gallery and spend $40,000 doing it and see what happens? I'm going to answer the first part of your question and turn the second half over to Annette. But um, in terms of the difference between Brand Gallery and this kind of gallery, is Brand Gallery really attracts artists from a national perspective, sometimes an international perspective. There's always been a, I mean, we have limited time, limited space, and there's always been a call for artists within our community to have more public space. Okay. Um, so and that's, that's a great explanation. That's yeah. Okay. Perfect explanation. I get it. What about the next question? Why not just spend the money and open a gallery? I'm going to turn you over to Annette. <laughs> Well, that is something that the commission did consider. One of the venues that they did discuss was the lower level of the Civic Auditorium. That's one of the spaces that they wanted to make an investment, but 
that requires a lot of collaboration with uh, community services and parks department since they use that as um, as a revenue stream and um, they wanted to open this up to have a consultant um, identify all the possible locations so before we make an investment because it can co uh, cost upwards of you know forty to a hundred thousand dollars to refurbish a phase but there's really a, a, a definite need for it and if there are any ongoing expenses you know that we can cover that cost well we have professional consultants through gate program or whoever ends up doing that program can't they just sort of throw this in as part of their scope of work and by the way, I wouldn't support using the lower level of the Civic Auditorium for this under any circumstances. I think that it's great for an art show, but if you have a gallery, you want something that people are going to walk by and look in the window and see and walk in, and the Civic is not that location, so I would never support that. But do we have anyone on staff that can do this? Do we really need to spend 40 I mean, we have such limited funding that I'd like to see this happen and be successful, and I'm trying to get to the best way of getting us there. Well, to the extent that... Um that we do have staff that has some expertise um, perhaps what we can do is, is uh, either reduce the amount of money that is being allocated here that would augment a staff effort so that we don't spend forty thousand dollars but I do think that knowing what we don't know is important so to the extent that Annette and her team are able to work with um, w with an expert that would be ideal um, but again I, I guess my suggestion would be to reduce the amount Okay. So that we have the capacity to bring somebody in if we need somebody, but that we don't want to spend that amount. Okay, and I'm not saying that it's the wrong way to go. I just have that concern. So I would like, at the very least, for staff to take a look at whether we can bring that amount down because sure. it just seems like it's a lot of money. and we, we, see, we feel like we have a lot of money right now, but this is money that we only get when there's big developments. And right now we're in a boom, so we have this money, but in the future we're not going to necessarily have that money. I, I don't expect the building to go on forever. Um, in terms of the murals on city property, first let me say, tread carefully <laughs> on this. This has this is the one thing that has the potential to get people upset, which isn't always a bad thing, but just be careful. Now, do other cities fund murals, or do they allow artists to paint them, or is it a mix? Because here we're, we're funding and we're doing an RFP, and again, in the interest of saving money, I'm wondering whether maybe before we do that, we just go and say to the artist community, we have this space, would you like to apply to paint on it without us having to pay them? It's a bit of both because good murals are expensive, or at least they certainly can be. So I think to the extent that we have a process outlined that would allow us to um, invest in the right mural uh, that the commission and the council wants to see uh, uh, installed, this gives us that opportunity. But it's uh, I've seen very bad murals, right. and very often those are free or inexpensive murals. Um, right. And paid ones can be also. And they can, so great, that's so. absolutely true. But I think this gives us the opportunity to get the best combination of uh, artworks and solutions. Okay. So I do hope that when we do we this, will tread we carefully as you look at people that are artists that have track records that have done things that are really interesting, not, you know, just sort of commercial pretty pictures. Uh, and then lastly, um, I do agree that we should do an RFP for GATE. As much as I think Praxis has done a really good job, and I, I do think they've done an excellent job, I like what they've done quite a bit. I don't see the harm in getting other proposals and, and having the commission and council evaluate those. And now that we've had this program for a couple of years, it would be interesting to see what, I know that Praxis, the last time they came in, they had sort of their expansion work plan. It would be interesting to see what other groups who have seen what Praxis has done, what their proposals are to build on that or improve on the process. Um, that's something that I think just would be a good exercise for all of us to see how far we can push that. And my last question for now is, what is happening with GATE? Because I, they have the one exhibit up next to BJ's, which hasn't changed in a long time. Is the program just stopped? And, and also, do we have enough vacant storefronts to really continue this at this point? Uh, the program um, has been in limbo ever since redevelopment was eliminate, eliminated. Praxis hasn't gone in to remove some of those last uh, remaining pieces of art with the hope and the anticipation that they could continue the program. Um, we do still have vacancies, um, and one of the things the commission was looking at to expand gate to, into the creative corridor or other parts of the city. Originally, we were confined just to the downtown because it was a redevelopment project area. It could be expanded citywide um, should we continue with the program. Well, I think that's a great idea. 
because I think now that we're no longer constrained with the downtown, looking really at where we need these, because the idea was to reduce blight, and I think that still should be part of the goal, and looking at, at vacancies that really are blighting vacancies all around the city should be our number one goal of this project at this point. Um, so I do hope that the locations that are chosen do that. I, I was unhappy with the locations on the second floor of that building. They were great exhibits. They were fabulous, but to me they didn't really do what I had thought we were going to do in terms of reducing blight for people that are passing by because you, they were destination locations, which to me is a wonderful thing, but a little bit different. I'd still like to see Gate be something that also reduces blight. I think that's an important part of its mission. And now that we can expand it, we sh the city, I think that's something for staffers to really, to our economic development people, to take a look at those locations. I don't know if it's the marketplace. I don't know if it's, you know, we're on San Fernando, we have some vacancies, but we should, we should look at that. But again, thank you to the commission and to staff. This is a wonderful um, effort, and I think it's really going to make a huge difference to the quality of life in Glendale. Thank you. I also want to thank the uh, commission and staff. I think they've done a great job. Uh, the commission, to me, really sort of has a vision, finally. It took a few years, many years, in my opinion. And I also kind of get this sense that they're operating much more efficiently. Um, in terms of the uh, RFP, I think we should uh, go out for an RFP and um, a feasibility study for a gallery. I, I don't think it merits spending forty thousand on it. Um, I think, uh, first of all, I'd like to see it somewhere in the downtown. I mean, that to me is the best place to do it. And so I think between our economic development team, some of the commercial brokers and the staff, I think we can come up with a uh, sense of where something could possibly uh, fit. Any other comments? Okay, then I'll make mine. S sometimes I think that my approval of arts and music is not there in this community. That's not true. I'm supposed to be a steward of everything in this city, especially when it comes to the finances of the city. I'm an artist myself. In college, I did hundreds of portraits, sold them, made a little money. I love good music. I love sports more, but bottom line is I like the arts and crafts. But the voters of the arts and music, but the public, when we asked them, rate this as lower priority compared to other items. It is a priority, but it's not rated as high. Just, that's just a given. I think I voted against the establishment of this commission, along with certain other commissions, because I saw the history. If you fund a commission, it grows financially. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger to the point where it gets out of control. Now we're up to $360,000 for two years. Um, I have a problem to agree with that. Um, my main issue is um, with it. I, I don't mind putting caps on all these different areas of funding, um, but I will not vote for anything that gives carte blanche for any commission in this city to spend $360,000 without the city council weighing in on each and every penny. I have never remembered a commission in this city getting that kind of approval. Ultimately, we are responsible for the money that is spent and just say, here, go spend it. Even Ms. Friedman had a number of questions. You have so many goals, so many things you want to do. That's great. I mean, RFP is one, feasibility study. We can't possibly sit here and discuss them all right here today, give you the carte blanche, come back two years later and see what you've done. I believe, approve the monies, but it's got to state that it comes back here, you come to us and tell us what you're going to do. And let us buy off on it. 
like the one where you say we, should, we think we ought to go out for an RFP. Bring it to us. You're going to find out that probably all five are going to say RFP. Uh, down, where are you going to put the different murals? I'll tell you some years ago, and I'm happy to see that we're progressing. Remember the chess park was created? I tried to get a mural painted on those vacant walls <coughs> by high school students in a competition. Couldn't even get to first base. A mural on a building? Not in this city. So I think today you could put a mural on the walls of the chess park. Long way. But come to council and ask us. If you feel it's necessary, put it on the consent calendar. And it'll pass right through unless a council person wants to pull it or somebody from the audience to discuss it. But I want to know what you're going to do. I don't want you doing it, and then we find out later about it and have people say, well, why'd they do this? Why'd they do that? And we say, well, we gave them the money and told them to go do it. No set, no set of politically appointed commissioners should have that much power to spend the city's money. And you get to the CIP, for instance, and you want to look at putting a portion, additional portion into the CIP. That CIP is city money. Now you want us to take additional money, if I'm reading this right, beyond the contract cost to do the capital improvement and put that into it. Money, money, money. We're not in fat city here. Mr. Achola is the first one to tell you. It's a new day. It's a new way of looking at uh, how we spend our money. So this is an awful lot of money to give to a commission. I don't know, you're, uh, you're, you want staff to look at all this stuff for you? That's time, that's money. You're not going to have staff looking at it for free. That's going to cost staff time. Everything you do is going to require staff to do something to develop it, whether it's report writing, review the legality of it, getting permits, whatever. And the cost keeps climbing. So. I'll only vote for this if I hear that you'll be coming to the City Council to get that approval on what you're doing. Yes, would you like to clarify? Sure, we would be happy to bring back um, you know, the call for artists or the RFP after it's fully developed before it's issue for Council approval. Every, every one of these areas, temporary arts supply, urban art programs, rotating programs as you develop the components of it. I think if for no other reason than, than promotion of each one of the components that you're considering here uh, this afternoon, the uh, uh, library arts and culture staff would want to come back, certainly securing council buy-in, especially if it's an installation on public property. I think we actually need to get your approval. Yeah, and, and I heard that they're going to set policy. Uh -huh. Council sets policy for the city. No commission. We've had this with other commissions. You do not set policy. That's reserved for the city council. But I heard that in there. I so think these the, things bother me. I think the idea is that we uh, had presented to council and council approved the uh, strategic plan, which is that policy and document. I think I voted for it. And that the council uh, would be presented with this funding plan, and then each item of that funding plan would come back to you. That's what I want to hear. Your consideration. And you break each individual component down. We're giving you a cap, sixty thousand, forty thousand, whatever. As you develop within that, you come to us and tell we're going to do this, and it's within the authorized ceiling. And so I think, yes, category. that's correct. Absolutely. And the, the policy discussions are just discussions. And I just want to um, reiterate that the $360,000 is funds from the Urban Art Fund, which are, which, are, which are designated for, for public art. I thought there was more than just that. Uh, there is a 360000 Urban Art Fund, and our general fund budget is $9,800. Yeah, that's been identified up till now. All the other staff time that's going to crank in is going to cost too. And that's not been identified. It's no giant. I was, um, I share your concerns, Mr. Weaver, regarding the uh, council's involvement in the expenditure of those funds. I can just by example uh, relate an issue with the Commission on the Status of Women, a very small appropriation that they had asked to do. Uh, and 
the funds were actually funds that they themselves had uh, raised, had raised mm -hmm. through their uh, dinners and events and all that other stuff. And we uh, were definitely, I think it was a Camp Rosie issue or one of, the, one of their programs, we were definitely knee deep in the uh, discussion of the appropriation. So I hope uh, it was always my understanding that all these would come back to us, not that they'd be happy to come back, uh, whether they're happy or not. Uh, it's my understanding that they would definitely come back. This is not a small amount of money. Yes, there is a large pool of money, but that is money that we, when it came time for us to go eye to eye with the developers and the contractors and everyone else saying that, hey guys, guess what, you're going to have to pay a, uh, it was a library fund, it was a parks fund, and it was a, a city art fund as well. So uh, to the extent that we did uh, much of the lifting in that, I certainly would like to make sure we have some say in that. I didn't read it clearly in the report. That's where I'm raising the issue. There's eight or nine categories. Uh, and I'm sure you're well on your way to determining which things you want to do first. I'll and, just come back and say. And that's why we is. picked such uh, talented individuals to serve on the commission. Right. Uh, to give us the ideas and let us hear from them what they think <laughs> the best ideas out of all the universe of ideas are. And Yeah, they uh, know more than we do. Of course they do. Yeah. Um, although you do like the arts and music, though. I do like it. But um, I'm not an expert. I can't go that far. I play a little violin now and again. Well, let's see. I don't play any instruments. Well, uh, Rachmaninoff on my <laughs> days off. But um, uh, certainly that, uh, you know, the arts are a wide encompassing field. And uh, I would like, I'd like them to do, continue their hard work and their good work, come to us and let us weigh in as well. So my understanding is what's going to happen if I vote yes. In a word, sir, yep. Huh? And we will do an RFP if that's the council's pleasure. It sounds like it is. Yeah, well, see, that's that's one category. For the uh, gate. gate. That's yeah. gate. That's one program with how much going into it on the back. So, you know, bring the, bring the gate program with that in. That's 60000 in that program. Now, whatever you're going to do within the gate, just bring us and say we're going to spend 30000 of it to do this. And let the council say you're... You're blessed. Go do it. Well, I would like to move the motion with the recommendations, the, the direction that I had given to staff on those individual items. I'm not prepared for that because I couldn't keep up with you on all the different things you're saying to do. I heard the RFP. I heard about policy. Um, what else? How about the consultant? I'm just not comfortable. Well, to, to summarize, yeah, sir, then it sounds as though we are we are doing an RFP on gate. We are ratcheting down the cost of a feasibility study such that our staff will do the, the bulk of that work and only engage uh, experts outside of the city as needed and sparingly. Um, and uh, that the, just to reaffirm uh, very clearly, the expenditures that occur will come back to the council. Yes, but just, I think there also needs to be a line, I hate to even bring this up, but I think there needs to be a line. I don't think we should be approving the design on every single utility box. I mean, oh, no, you don't need no, to micromanage no. like that. I think that what Mr. Weaver, uh, assuming I, I'd like to just be sure we're on the same page, we're yeah, talking about expenditure. I'm with you. I don't want to look at, I, one day I brought to him, he just laughed at me. Another city had these different, uh, they sat on the ground, um, they had telephones in them, and they were characters, and they were all downtown. I said, well, God, that, that's interesting. I have all these different characters, whether they're Disney or whatever, with phones in them, whatever. I was laughing because there are no more public phones. And that's probably <laughs> it. But, you know, you, so you want to do paintings instead on box? Well, fine. Just come and tell us. We're going to do it in this section of town. We're going to do X amount of them. We have a number of designs. Fine. Go do it. I just want to know what you're doing and how much of the forty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 you're going to spend on it. That's all. So I made a motion, and Mr. Ochoa, I think, well, verified I, my, my comments. Again, I'm not comfortable because I didn't, I'm sorry, Ms. Freeman, I did not catch every single thing that you said that you would like. 
And Mr. Mayor, I think I what huh? Councilmember Friedman is saying that her motion is the motion that's on the floor, but in addition, as clarified by Mr. Ochoa. So just those three items. Which that is? Gate, that the gate will go off for RFP, that the, uh, the feasibility study, the staff will look at options for reducing that, and that there will be council approval of individual expenditures under the work plan. Right, but I also had suggested that we look at ways of if funding performances that weren't just at the Brand Library, okay. if possible. That could be part of the, the other category that was outlined. Okay, let's see. Ex anticipated that the program will be expanded to the creative quarter and in publicly and privately owned passages waste. So we're not going to see any of that? Sorry, sir? That's within the gate program I'm reading here. Art and vacant storefront program, right? Yes. Oh, but this is a public performance. An RFP for that. about musicians outside of the Brand Library venue to look in. And that's under Just to the, be that's open under to that. I'm not saying you have to do it, but let's at least allow it. Because right now, the way that? the plan is written, it's, only not, it's not allowed. No. Oh, up there. See, I, I'm lost. Uh, but I would like to just be kept abreast of the design on any of those boxes. I mean, some of those, I mean, I can imagine very uh, artistic yet controversial designs that I don't necessarily want to. I want Darth Vader. Be, have it be implied that I approved, you know. Someone you, could say USC. I is was just lousy. going to say USC football players. Right. Or, or political or. You can put the UCLA. You can or, put the UCLA coach on. I don't want to vote on it, but I just like to be kept abreast of it just Agreed. to make sure that it's. it's not I think too, you get what we're talking about. Or too boring. Okay, I'll second the motion. As amended by. As amended and discussed. Mr. City Attorney, would you please tell me what the amended motion is now? Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, the motion is as uh, on the agenda with the additions that the uh, the gate program will be will be RFP. Um, the staff will look at op options on reducing the cost of the feasibility study and, and trying to do most of that work uh, in house and using the consultant for. Co expenditures that uh, cannot be handled in-house. Uh, the council will have approval of individual expenditures under the work plan, and the uh, work plan will include looking at options for the, the cultural performing arts at brand to expand and beyond brand, the brand and library. And when the feasibility stay is done, we'll see it? Yeah, I think the, the concept is any, any individual expenditure or, or project under the work plan will come back and to the I council. I guess I'll try to live with that. Okay, there's a motion been made. And a second. second. No further discussion. Roll call. Council members Friedman. Yes. Najarian. Yes. Quintero. Yes. Onion. Yes. Mayor Weaver. Aye. Okay. Thank you all for coming. If you came for that, uh, we're going to move on. All right. We're going to adjourn. At, okay. There's a motion to adjourn. So moved. But second. Okay. We stand adjourned at. 4.55 p.m. And you can leave. Going back we... in for closed session?